Oh hey there, bet you didn't know I could spin a hat on one finger, did ya? I could also do it with a deck of standard bicycle playing cards. Check this out, man. Woo! This is where six years of celibacy will get you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but check this out. If I crack these puppies open now, you'll see on the inside, the face of the queen is ruined, man. There's actually an easy way to fix that. All I have to do is just give it a little rub like this. And you can actually see there's nothing in this hand here, but when I rub it just right, it'll completely restore the queen, baby. But that's not all. You can actually take a few cards out of the pack like this. And if I put them face to face like that, all I've got to do now is I spin these these ones held quick. I spin them so fast you can't even see them anymore, but it looks like they've melded together. Of course, that is just an illusion, and that is trick for day number 53. I hope you guys enjoyed that trick. It's just something that I threw together for day number 53 because eventually you start running out of ideas and you have to start digging into the troves at the back of your head. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't even know what I'm saying. In this video, I want to be sharing with you my absolute favorite magician of all time. In fact, I used to have a signed poster from this man, but over the years, it's unfortunately disappeared, which breaks my heart, but he's still my favorite magician and a big inspiration into my own work. And if you know my work, you'll totally understand why. And that magician is none other than Paul Daniels. Anyway, subscribe if you haven't already and uh, like the video and all that good stuff because without your interactions, I will disappear into obscurity. Yeah, so make sure that you, uh, you know, subscribe and stuff. All right, sit back and relax and join me as we search the YouTubes, baby. All right, first things first, Paul. Daniels. What the hell is that, man? That's a cat. Ah, there he is. Mr. Paul Daniels himself. Check it out. All right, let's have a quick gander. This guy is about to perform a trick which is very close to my heart. It's been my bread and butter for 11 years. Nobody quite performs it like this man. He is the GOAT. The G-O-A-T. Greatest of all time. Check it out. In fact, I know what's already in your mind. You see, I walk on, a mind reader, I know what you're thinking. What's that? Many people wonder, what is that? That is, in truth, the world's oldest recorded trick. Oh, some say. Some actually say this. It's, it's a true story. That there's a hieroglyphic in Egypt on a wall of a man doing this trick. I don't know whether it's true or not. I'm just telling you that's what they think, all right? Hieroglyphic. If it was this far down the wall, it would be a lowerglyphic. You know. <laughs> now, what we need to right. do here is we're going to pick on somebody in the audience. Now. Young man there with a sort of a knitted sweater with a light line across and that. You, sir, what's your name? Chris. Chris! Good, good answer, good. Chris, where are you from? Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush? Just over the road. Just over the road? How nice of you to drop in. <laughs> sort of like home from home, isn't it? Now, Chris of Shepherd's Bush, what I must ask you to do... Hang on, sorry to interrupt here. He's just so well-spoken that I feel like anything he says can be perceived as funny. Do you know, because he's just got that great just gentlemanly accent about him and he's just well-spoken and he carries himself really confidently, which is just, it's inspiring. Anyway. Who is this? I must ask you to answer nice and loud, nice and honest. What's that? It's a cup. It is indeed a cup. A cup like. Because I'm from the north, you see. <laughs> what you've got to do is this. You take that and you put it there and you use one of these. Now, I only use one cup and one ball. And all you have to do, Chris, is keep your eye on the little white ball. Now, Christopher, is that your full title? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Christopher, where is the ball? On top of the cup. You're wrong, it's on the bottom, the cup is upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That right there is called disarming the audience. <laughs> He's now got them on his side, you know? He's delivering these, I guess you could call them lame jokes, but it's creating this atmosphere now where the audience feel involved and it's just, the walls are dropping. Now you can just kind of have fun with it and do what you want to do. And this is a great, like it's a great lesson for anyone who wants to do magic. Bring the walls down first, then do the trick. Little comedy, little conversation, whatever you got to do. This guy's the master of it though. He's already got that whole crowd just eating out of the palm of his hand. <laughs> That's a skill and devotion. <laughs> Perhaps my speed is baffling you. So I should give you another chance. I'll even put my hands in my pockets. Christopher of Shepherd's Bush who is now desperately wishing he'd gone to see something else. Christopher, <laughs> where's the ball? It's on the top of the cup. 
it on top of the bottom of the cup. And the only time you should worry is if I sneak it into my left hand. Because if the ball's in my left hand, it's in my left hand. If it's not in my hand, it's under the cup. If it's under the cup, it's not in my hand at all. If it was in that hand, it could be in that. If it was in that, it could be up there. If it was up there, it could be down there. If it was in the pocket at the same time, it could be up there at the same time. It's under the cup. If the cup and the ball together, they can't be separate. If the cup and the ball are together, it's up there at the same time. Now, if the cup and the ball are separate and the cup is empty, you can't have the ball. You've got the ball in the cup, you can't be in the pocket. In the pocket, you can't be in the cup. Same time, it's under the cup. If, on the other hand, the ball and the cup are together, and the cup and the... You're not following this, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's too fast. It's too fast. Too good. Here <laughs> is a television action replay. Slowly, Chris, where's the ball? It's in the cup. In the cup. Take it out, put it into my pocket. Where is it now? For £50. Pounds. <laughs> it's, um, in your pocket. In my pocket. In other words, it can't be under the cup, right? right. Wrong. Oh. Now, this is <laughs> <laughs> so good. teaching this. I mean, there's no pocket. <laughs> What do you do for a living, Chris? What's your job, your vocation, your way of life, your occupation? Uh, it's a, a sales representative for a vending machine company. What you need is a cup. <laughs> I mean, I'll teach you this. I've been up here a few minutes, I just walked on, and already you owe me £50. <laughs> oh, the doors have been locked. Now look. <laughs> Ball, ball, cup. Now, this is how the trick works. It's very simple. You get a cup and a ball, and you show it to be empty, you see? Just an empty cup. And you drop the ball in there. Now, the moment the ball is in the cup, I'll teach him this. <laughs> you take it out with a sweeping, swooping action, right? You sweep it out, you put the ball in your pocket, and you flick it hard. Now, the ball, I know this is a funny thing to say, but the ball actually physically shoots up your sleeve. Yes? Yeah. Say, yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. Good. Now, you've got to put the cup down to catch a ball that goes up your sleeve, across your shoulder, down the side, under the cup. <laughs> but be very careful that you don't put the ball into the wrong pocket, because when you go flick, everybody claps. Why do they clap? Because when you flick, you've got a lemon. <laughs> it Great. If you'll clap that, you'll go mad over the orange. I don't know where that <laughs> It's too good. It's just too good, man. The crazy thing about that routine is the timing of it. That's a routine that typically a magician will do in like two minutes. He's managed to extend it to like four, maybe five minutes. And the whole time it's like engaging. And he uses the audience perfectly, picks on that one guy in the crowd and turns that guy into his friend. So now when that guy interacts with him, it just creates this genuine back and forth, which the audience just vibe on. I mean, I'm vibing on it. I've seen that performance so many times and every time I watch it, it makes me smile, makes me happy. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> Recommended me. Oh yeah. Here's another performance by Paul Daniels, which is one of my favorites as well. And it's unique. Like I've never seen anyone do something like this one before ever. And I can't imagine that they ever will because it's just so creative. But check this out. This is crazy, man. Obviously the quality of all these videos is, uh, you know, pretty low because this is all from like the eighties, you know, this is, Long time ago, this guy was before me, before my time, and still he's one of my favorite magicians. Just so inspiring. Even by today's standard, he is just the best. He's just the best. It's just so good. Carries himself so well. You know, speaks well. I love the way that he's able to speak fast, perform the trick, and still constantly be aware of his surroundings, like engaging with his audience and having the jokes. And, uh, and all of his jokes aren't just heavily scripted. They're actually off the cuff, which just makes it so much more fun to watch. Anyway. Thank you, very nice. A long time ago, the very first Royal Command performance had on it a magician. The most famous magician in London at the time was David Devant, a great magician. And in those days, well, magic was different to the way that I presented. It was a lot different. And uh, nowadays, the children look at the badge of the magician. And when they look at the badge of the magician, they see him, he's always pulling a rabbit out of something. And the children are confused. So I thought I'd go back a little way in magic and uh, present that trick to you tonight. <laughs> um, so let's do it. Can I have a round of applause for my lovely assistant, Miss Debbie McGee? She always helps me, and she's here tonight. Thank you, Debbie. 
Now, she has to do something very strange, the strange slopes, as it always did in those days. So they used to lower something at the back for the magician to stand on. And There's also just like, this opening, right? This is 50, 55 seconds of him kind of introducing the idea of a trick, but because he's just so, I don't know, there's something about him, you know? It feels like you're talking to like that holy jolly old fellow that just you can't stop listening to his stories, you know? The way he shares things is like he's sharing a story that's just so, I don't know, he's so genuine. I think that's what it is. It's just so genuine, you just, you wanna hear it. <laughs> anyway. And then the table did not escape and the orchestra finished up doing the act. Now, children, if you are viewing, this is important. That is not a vase, a vase, or a vase. <laughs> that is a hat, a top hat. <laughs> Nowadays, nobody wears them. But in Victorian times, when a man went to the disco, <laughs> that was on his head. That was the top <laughs> hat. Oh, and the trick was dead easy. Pulling a rabbit from a hat was really easy. Because in those days, they had a different fashion again. They had fat sleeves, not this thin stuff. So all they had to do was this. All they had to do was they just leaned on a piece of scenery. And once they were on the scenery like that, they would talk. And as they talked away, someone would drop a rabbit down the sleeve. See? <laughs> oh, it's true. This is where the expression obviously comes from, rabbiting on. Now, <laughs> The moment the rabbit was in there, the magician would turn away from the wings and he would smile, he would sparkle, his eyes would flash, he would catch every eye in the theatre. And why? Because he had a big bulge here going like this. <laughs> he would approach the hat, straighten his arm, the rabbit would go zonk into the bottom of there. Zonk, and it would, poor little rabbit would lay there, like that. <laughs> Thinking my agent promised me a part in Watership Down, and here I am now. <laughs> so tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I should like to present for you all a world famous rabbit from a hat. Thank you. So good. Just. You see, he's now managed to uh, set it up so that the trick seems more impossible now, right? Because he doesn't have the big sleeves and he's described a method that is completely believable, even though that's not how it was done in those times. But he's told a story that is convincing enough that you'd believe it. And now he's going to do the same trick but he's not having the big sleeves you know so it just creates this mystery like how's he gonna do it when he's not wearing those big ass sleeves so you kind of want to know and you're kind of engaged into it because of it so it's great it's just it's good this has nothing to do with the trick <laughs> this is just union rules for magicians there it is that's that's where that's where i got it from that's where the joke comes from please however take note that there is nothing at all up this sleeve here we... <laughs> I'll start again. There's nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. And as you can all... S you stand at this end of the table to do the trick. <laughs> it's the only way. And then you reach into the hat and you produce a rabbit... You keep hold <laughs> of the hat. And then, having kept hold of the hat... It's so cartoony. You produce a rabbit. That's not a rabbit, that's a hare. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the trick that has fooled millions. <laughs> it's for children, missus, all right? It's for children. It's... Nobody said it was designed to fool an adult. Thank you. <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right, so I can't find the rabbit, but I am a professional magician. I carry a spare. Ladies and gentlemen, the classic rabbit from a hat. I don't know if it's the same for anyone else, but the fact that he has now moved to the other side of the table and is revealing the underneath of the table, it kind of makes the fact that that hat was moving across the table so much more impressive because I gotta be honest with you, I'm unsure how that worked. <laughs> I think the pesky wabbit is trying to get away. <laughs> I shall sneak up on the pesky wabbit. 
the moment we have all been waiting for. Especially me. <laughs> Rub it in my hat! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really sorry. They see that's not supposed to be there at all. That's supposed to be on a hook right round round the back of the table. You see? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> do not laugh. You do not applaud until the magician produces a rabbit from a hat, like that. Oh, hey. <laughs> Damn. So good. Talk about taking an old school plot and just make, I mean, he's old school, but that's even more old school. Magicians are known for a rabbit from a hat. You know what I mean? And he does it. And the routine is just so entertaining. Oh God, it's so funny. It's so good. I love everything about it. Still a while here just to point something out because I know a lot of people love animals and worry. Don't worry about Starsky. We call him Starsky. He's got a hutch upstairs. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> okay. The hole in the hat is always bigger than he would tunnel in the ground, ladies and gentlemen. Always. Always bigger than he would tunnel in the ground. And just in case you thought that was a fluke, this is his big trick. Go on, son. Out you pop. Yes, daddy loves you. And a lot of people pick up their animals by the ears. Never do that, children. That's dangerous. Come on, son. Get in the hat. Take a bow, don't forget the box. That's the box, <laughs> and off you go. Bye now. So good. What a great way to end the routine as well. Just showing that he actually cares for his animals. You know, he doesn't just abuse them for props in magic. He's actually, I mean, he cares for that animal, right? The rabbit actually seemed to enjoy just being inside of the hat, which makes it just much more beautiful to watch. Anyway, freaking amazing. What a good routine. I would love to be able to come up with something like that. Just, I don't know how the man does it. He's amazing, absolutely phenomenal. I don't know if you can tell already, like if you watch a lot of my videos, especially my shorts, you can already start to see where like a lot of my humor comes from. You know, it's definitely, I'm heavily inspired by this man, but like a lot, like a lot. I obviously try to have my own personality. I'm not English for starters, I'm Australian. <laughs> That's personality right there, right? Let's see if we can just find one more. This one, uh, Again, this is another one of my favorite performances. All of these clips, by the way, I've seen before, but I haven't watched them in like over a year. So I'm like re-experiencing these for the first time again. But this billiard ball act, I mean, my, I have a billiard ball routine that I do, which in retrospect is similar to this, but it's still very different. My, my presentation is very different. He does a lot of classics and I love that. I think that's what draws me to him the most, that he does such old school magic. Anyway, let's have a look. Right, here we go. Straight into it, just no dead time. <laughs> I used to enjoy the manipulators who used to show their hands empty and they'd have music like this. Nice, isn't it? And they would show the hands empty with style and flair. They would swing around and then reach into the air and produce something like a snooker ball. Now then they would place it here and do this and it would roll round and round their fingers. How they did it, I could never figure it out. <laughs> then they would produce another one, all solid. And now they had two. How they did it, I used to watch in trance. <laughs> there was one called Ron Macmillan who could actually throw the ball up into the air and catch it there like that. Watch it, show you. He used to throw it and catch it. There. <laughs> he used to throw it and catch it. There. <laughs> I can't do it. Because every time I try to throw it, the ball would disappear and reappear in here, in my pocket. <laughs> now, of course, I had the two balls, but some manipulators could go like that and they would have three. The bit I could never understand is when they did this and had four. <laughs> so now I was all geared up to do the world famous billiard ball manipulation trick with one, two, three, four billiard balls. Then when I watched them more closely, I discovered that they did this. They would take the one, the two, the three, and the four, and they would just rub one of the ball. And they would adjust the others. And then the ball had disappeared. <laughs> Here? No. Yeah, so good. Great delivery. What I thought I 
I could do was when they had, um, where is it? <laughs> a handkerchief. And they would take the handkerchief and cover the balls like so. Now, of course, underneath here, they had three balls, one, two, three, and then they would go, and one had gone. Now, <laughs> not here. <laughs> so Great, I love it. The two balls left. And of course, I love that he keeps like subverting expectation, you know, like he does something that is seemingly so obvious and then just completely shatters your reality again. And then you get to go straight back to the trick. So everything just keeps happening in this like, just fun. It's just fun to experience, you know, and there's no like, there's no, none of this like I'm better than you kind of behavior or anything. It's just all in the name of having fun as a performer and with his audience. And it's just a joy to watch. Ugh. Pause this. Having got the, the two balls, this was the bit that really amazed me. They would take the two, and all they had to do was just wave them in the air. And as they waved them in the air, they reduced the two balls to being only one. <laughs> oh, by the way, the last ball, I tried, I tried. I stroked it just as they had before. Nothing. I used, um, I used one of these someplace. Uh, where is it? A magic wand. Nothing. <laughs> so, I realized what was missing was what they all had. A beautiful assistant. That's actually his wife, by the way. Debbie McGee he used to perform with his oh, wife, which Debbie. was, yeah, kind of lovely. Now, Debbie, you just rest that there. This is the ball. This, and I just show the audience, just don't drop it, is this, it's a glass of water. Cheers. Hmm. Ooh la la. <laughs> now we put the ball, thank you, underneath the cloth, like this. Adjust the cloth completely, perfectly, like so, and then we tap it with the wand. Where's the wand? I've got the wand. Where's the wand? I've lost the wand. There it is. Now, we put it here. This is the glass. Get that over the cloth like that. <laughs> now. Beautiful. Even if, like, if you're a magician, it's like a masterclass in how to entertain a crowd. And if you're not a magician, it's just so enjoyable to watch. So it's just good for everyone. I don't know. Comment down below. Who's your favorite magician? Is it Paul Daniels? I want to know. I think it's Paul Daniels now. <laughs> anyway, for reals though, let me know what you thought of old Paul Daniels there. I'm still inspired constantly by his work. In fact, I find myself going through old books and DVDs that I have of his to get re-inspired or creative again. And... Honestly, it's just a beautiful thing to experience, man. His magic is just, just that, it's magic. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I feel like a kid again, having gone through all of those videos. So my soul feels really full watching it again. So I'm gonna go to bed. Good night. Call me Bucky Nook. Lucky that I'm innocent. Uh, if I didn't have no morals, I'd be menacing.